to bring a child on earth or to you know to bring a child into this world is it so it is it you more go so you have more experience than i yeah no because i want to understand where human ones are she's coming from but why would you even bring a child into this world if the this if she would be uh, facing all sorts of um, um, pain and suffering what's the purpose yeah. of that i i i I feel, you. Uh, I feel you. I I feel the the fear, the the threat. Because when you and this is actually coming, this is very personal. This is coming from a person who's newly married. Yeah, and um, it's a very. I understand your position right now, and not just for you, but for your husband, right? Like in your right mind, if you just follow logically, if life is suffering and everything is uncertain and everything around me is falling apart, why would I even bring life here? I think that's well framed enough, mm -hmm. and there are so many ways to approach this question. But I'll, I'll just I'll try. First, first question. You ask that question. I wouldn't know if you are a believer, of the person of Jesus Christ. Because if you are a believer of the person of Jesus Christ, you would begin to ask like, why do I even want to do that? Is that just my will based from my fear, or do you have the the perspective of what does God want? Because there's so many levels in that question. Because you can talk about Christian ethics, you can talk about who are you to decide about who to bring into this life. Number one, you can't make life. You you can't. It's given to you. It's a gift from God. Like I've I've lost children. I'm in my womb, and I've no I've seen people who have lost their children in their adult years or they've been wanting to have a child that that concern is real though i if i if i'm like just thinking yeah of course right it may seem so selfish because the reason behind that as a mother you're nurturing enough because you want to protect the child from the possible pain and suffering yeah. i think that's already established so to bring you to a conclusion as you struggle this question I think I would like to direct you to ask yourself the question between your, you and your husband. Am I living my life according to the will of God or according to how I see my life, how I should be? Because that would level the ground for you. Like, is it really just my will? I understand the fear, the concern. If you, you're in business, you can see the viability. There's no proper return. Yes, the entrance, <laughs> the strategy is very near. Like, you can't think of it. Like, you compute everything. It's just so difficult. But again, as a follower of Christ, that's not our standard. We don't live life and act based on how circumstances are happening. Yeah. And that's why in Habakkuk he said, when God said, the righteous live by faith. And if you are walking in the path of righteousness, the way of God, you are to live by faith. If God wants to bless you with a child, embrace it. It's a gift. He too has called that child for a reason and purpose in this earth. And our job as parents or mother is to raise them such that they will be found fitting in the kingdom. For you to bring your fear in the forefront already will nullify in your perspective of what is God doing in your marriage? What is God doing in your life? And my friend, I, I understand you, but imagine you are going to be a bearer of life. And even if, I actually remember the movie, right? There's one child alone that was um, saved from all the, the, I don't know what was happening. Everybody was dying. Only a child was, was spared. And, what if there's a specific reason and purpose that the child that God wants to bless you with? You can't go against that. You can't intervene that. And I think my invitation to you is like, do you trust God? Do you trust God that He will take care of you and your husband? Do you trust God that He will give you enough strength to carry this? And above all, I pray and I, I, I encourage you to get a bigger perspective, rather beyond your circumstances. History will continue on. Until God says so, history will continue on. COVID will disappear. Probably will find a way to treat this. Or maybe another war will come in. But the church or the followers of Jesus has to continue until we're called back to Him. And at this moment, we cannot suspend our plans that are consistent to the plan of the kingdom. You, can't, you cannot just stop that. Our heart will always be, Lord, what? that's why the prayer, our Father who art in heaven, 
the kingdom come, thy will be done. Let that be the focus of your thinking and your reasoning behind why you want to have a child and why not to have a child. Yes, so I hope that provides that's, that's something for the right answer. Consider. I told you. Uh, well put, uh, well put. I, I will only add a, short, a quick, quick question, uh, note to what others uh, just said. And uh, I have a father too, I've got a 14 year old and 11 year old. And I can tell you this if there's one thing that can literally remodel your life from being self centric to other centric, from being focused on yourself to being focused on others, mm -hmm. uh, is your, your life that you pour out into, into your kids. Yes. So here's something that you, you will begin to see. Now, it's not a decision or a question I'd like to take lightly. Uh, it's something that you have to think through very, very carefully. I've got some very good friends who have made the decision that they will not have kids for mm -hmm. the many reasons that Earl just pointed out. And they, they find that it is both uh, morally and socially responsible to not do that. I have several other friends of mine who are not in a position to have children. Mm -hmm. uh, because of some physical limitation and so on and so forth. Uh, irrespective, irrespective of whether you eventually choose to have or you don't have children, uh, I would say get to a place where you'll be able to engage with mm -hmm. them. Because apart from them compelling you to become other-centric more than focused on self, they have this unique ability to bring you to what I would call foundations of what is true, what is genuine, what is real. That's the one thing that you cannot run away uh, from a kid. You cannot run away from the question, but why? You <laughs> can't. Now, if you think about it, the more you appreciate that question, the more you begin to realize it's because there is a disconnect between the, the grand picture you're painting and the ground realities of that picture painting mm -hmm. that the question is, but why? But why? But why? So, yeah, the, those would be two very, very simple. I think others dealt magnificently with the whole picture painted from the perspective of a life that was devoted to, to living it on God's terms. Uh, and I want to push that a little further down. I'm saying this is something that is literally life-shaping and life-changing for anybody, irrespective of your worldview, your belief system and, and your faith uh, system and so on and so forth. But it will be beautifully life-shaping if you begin to see how children are a gift from God. And that's how Psalm 121 puts it, that children are a gift from God. Not something we want to take lightly, not something we want to be flippant about, something that has to be really carefully thought through, but yes, it is something that will make us better and not worse off because of that. Thank you, whoever this is. Thank you so much for asking that question. Mm -hmm. really yes. I'd love to put a personal touch to this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have two daughters and a boy. You know, um, <coughs> our, our first child will be a girl, second girl, and last a boy. Oh, please? Yeah, so I had a, yeah, we have two girls and a boy, and I call it, uh, um, we call it sanctification, sanctification, and vindication. Uh, but, but another story, but you know, the reason why it was a blessing, because we were planning to have children, and when God blessed us with Colin, our last child, uh, and it was a boy, it was so parallel to my own life's uh, journey uh, with my own family. So I came from a broken family. Mom and dad split about a young age. Um, my siblings, my two older sisters and me being the youngest boy, we didn't have that opportunity to have the so-called, you know, normal family mm -hmm. set up. But when God blessed me with Colin, a son, two older daughters, it reminded me of something that I made or kind of a redemptive factor to my own journey and story, you know, when I look at it. So, I mean, for me, children are definitely a blessing. And for me, it struck me at the core. Where God is amazingly, it's just a grand weaver. That's what a dear friend of ours had said. And the way he weaves our stories together, it's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, that's why I can.
And yes, and just for our friend who asked a question, I'm actually present that for you to even think that question, that means you have a, that innate capacity to care and love because you just don't want to have that somebody to bring this into this world. But yes, I think we have already outlined you know, things to direct. Right, right. Think, think it through. And uh, I'm excited for you, actually. So please tell us if you do decide, and if you do how. Yeah, if you have a boy, she was a nice girl, or she was, she was, she was, she was any J. Uh, well, Jesus. Earl, and, uh, Earl is a male's name, so. Okay, but anyway, so, okay, um, going back to the final point that was uh, given to us. Now, um, this incredible gospel narrative, this the person of Jesus Christ, how do we share um, this to people who don't know of them, 